Welcome to Space Engine. This is a pretty cool little uh, program designed to show you some things, I guess, in space. Um, I'm going to be reviewing a little bit of it, maybe take you a tour of the planets in our solar system, maybe go to a couple other, you know, stars in our solar system and out to the galaxies so you can see what, you know, what it's all about. And you can see it's got some pretty good pretty good graphics here. You can, you can kind of mess around with them a little bit. Uh, I'll show you what a few of the settings are. So control F4. Get, so we'll take a look at the graphics here. Stars motion blur. That's one of the main things here. <coughs> you can set it off, set it completely off so that there is no motion blur. Set it so that there's only blur when you're moving forward and backwards. And set it so that when you're moving and rotating. So I'll show you what the blur looks like kind of cool, um, kind of gives it sort of a, you know, cinematic feel to it. So I usually keep that on moving so that it kind of gives me the feel of, you know, moving really fast. Uh, you can turn off the lens flares from the star. So now it's just got the, the glue, you know, the, the things coming off. I don't know what you call those. Uh, turn it back on. Now we've got the lens flare. So it's pretty cool. Uh, that's a neat little thing that you can get, you know, turn on and off. Uh, let's see what else can we do here. You can auto set on auto exposure. Um, so it's basically, you know, it'll automatically expose so you don't get overwhelmed by the brightness of other objects when you're, you know, focused on, for example, here on the Earth. Uh, you know, we won't get over overexposed by the sun. I don't usually usually keep that on. I, I like having the, you know, the big cinematic feel to it. Um, so let's begin our tour. We're going to start with Mercury. First planet body in our solar system. So you can see it's fairly detailed. Uh, the closer I get, the more detailed it will become. You just have to be careful not to get too close. If you go inside the planet, you're going to get stuck on the surface and it's kind of hard to get off. Take a second to render here. I don't know if it's going to fully render. Kind of a crater little planet. And I think. Yeah, there's Venus. We'll go to Venus there. Press G to go to. You can just click on pretty much any body you see here. I could click on any of those stars. Uh, the center of the Milky Way galaxy. You can see in the background. I could click on that. Here we are at Venus pretty boring, just a, as it says in the description, it's a warm desert, uh, you know, with an atmosphere. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Kind of careful because this game does have a tendency to, to lag out and completely crash on me. Uh, we are already Earth, which is, as you know, the third planet, so we'll go straight to Mars. Click go to, that will take us right there. And there we go, Mars, and it's two two stars, or, sorry, two moons. You can see Phobos and Deimos. There's Phobos, and there's Deimos. We'll go take a look at Phobos. They pretty much look exactly the same. Here we are, get a little bit of speed. I probably should have went to Deimos so I could have taken a look at Mars. We're going to be behind Mars here on Phobos. Yeah, not quite the same Phobos from Doom, but it is. There's a pretty cool view of Mars and, you know, and the sun in the background sitting on Phobos' surface. Get back a little bit. Center myself on Mars. So, where to next? I guess Jupiter would be the next planet. Now, I don't know if you can see the asteroid belt. Um, you know, it's going to, they're kind of spread far apart, so it'd be kind of tough to see every asteroid. There you can see Jupiter, uh, it's storm. You may not be able to see it, it's probably on the dark side right now. Yeah, I don't feel like adjusting the time just to see the storm of Jupiter, it's pretty boring. But you can see the very faint rings of Jupiter and its few moons. So next stop, Saturn. 
probably on the other side of the sun again. Oh, there we are. There's Saturn, and they've rendered quite a few of its moons. I don't know if they have all, you know, all 30, whatever, 60 or 80 or how many other moons Saturn has. Um, that one's kind of an interesting one, Titan. Uh, it's the only moon I think Saturn has with an atmosphere of its own. And it's a frozen ice world, like it says. Let's see, take a look at it and see how this game, how this simulator renders Titan. Yeah, you can see its atmosphere, kind of a bluey glow. Take a look at the sun, see what Saturn would look like. Kind of cool. They actually discover most of these moons um, from shadows, you know, on the surface of Saturn as as the moons pass between Saturn and the Sun. I don't think we actually have any here at this moment, but they would show up as a black dot moving across Saturn. So ne next we've got, I believe, Neptune, no, Uran Uranus. Yeah, Uranus is next. very faint rings. It also has rings. Um, you may need to point them at the sun to take a look at them. No, they're they're very faint. You're not probably not going to be able to see them. Uh, yeah, I can't see anything. Oh, there's Uranus and its moons. So next we're going to take a look at Neptune. You can see the rings there. Neptune's ring. It's one ring. That's a pretty cool looking planet. It's got a little storm there. Don't know if uh, you know how realistic this is, but it's a pretty cool texture. You can see some of its moons. Uh, I won't be taking a look at any of those. Let's go to Pluto, even though that is not a planet. It's a dwarf planet. Pluto Charon. Pluto and its moon. <coughs> They've actually discovered another science fact. They, oh, see, now it's having problems rendering for some odd reason Pluto's surface. But there's its moon, Charon, and they've actually found another little, you know, dwarf moon that goes around Pluto, another satellite. So I don't know know how they interpret this, but we'll take a look anyway. Pretty boring, just a little asteroid. Let's see if they've rendered Pluto yet, we'll go take a look. No, it's that's not gonna render. Those are supposed to be craters and don't know what those spiky things would normally be, but oh no, I've completely lagged out. To go back to Earth. Giga Park Sex. Where on Earth am I? There's Earth. Okay, we'll go back there. Alright. A little bit of technical difficulties there. Earth and our one moon. So next after this, I think we'll go take a look at one of these stars in the background here, and then maybe go to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So there's a fairly neat rendering of what the moon looks like. Pretty good texture pack on there. You can see there's the dark side. It's completely, pretty much completely blacked out. You can see a little bit of it, but just reflections from Earth. You know what we can see. So let us go. That looks like Orion. It is too. And there would be Beetlejuice. So let's go there. This will be a little bit of a distance, so we might get to see some of that motion blur effect. But speed ahead. Hopefully, this doesn't overwhelm 
the processor, it's going to be pretty big. Yeah. yeah, this texture pack hasn't rendered properly. That's okay. It's got its couple planets, you can see. Uh, there's Beetlejuice 1. That's an ice giant planet that we think there could be life on. <coughs> Go there. Well, that's not how I'd picture an ice giant, but what do I know? And there's click on the Milky Way. Now I've got the Milky Way highlighted. If I were to right click and drag, we're going to go outside. And I'll try and center it a little bit. Back out. And have to go a little faster than that. There we go. There you have it. <coughs> Milky Way Galaxy. So let's go find Andromeda. I see you in the background. That's Andromeda, and we'll go on to Andromeda now. Pretty cool. And so just like with the Milky Way, I can go into pretty much any star here. Uh, there are limitations, of course. Some of them are ren uh, rendered as just static objects. But I can go into pretty much all of them. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to go to the center and take a look at the black hole. Hopefully this doesn't crash the game. So Control g takes me to the center, and we pretty much just sit back and relax for the flight to the center of a galaxy. Yeah, it's not going to render as fast as we're moving, but we'll get something at least. So we're at the center now. Uh, it's still rendering. You can see at the bottom there it's going to pop up and it's going to kind of, yeah, like that. So I'll back out a little bit. Slow down. There you go. Pretty cool. It's an artist's rendition of what a black hole might look like. Because it's basically diffracting all the light behind it and in front of it and beside it, you know, to one infinitely small point. You can see the event horizon uh, where light cannot escape the gravitational pull of the black hole. It's pretty cool, so we'll back out a little bit more here. Watch all the stars come back together. Clustering together, they're lagging a little bit. It's trying to render all this stuff. You know, it's a little bit slow. There's so much in this simulation. I could spend hours. I spent a few hours last night just looking at it. You know, just going through a few things. That's really cool. Getting a little bit of speed here. We'll get outside this galaxy and take a look. So, there you have it, Andromeda. So in about 6 billion years, Andromeda is headed towards our Milky Way galaxy, and it's going to crash into it. So that'll be kind of interesting. Nobody will be around to see it, but it's kind of interesting to know about it. So there you have it, Space Engine. You can go and download it for free.